The Woman with the Dead Soul From Poems by Stephen Phillips Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone Allured by the disastrous tavern light, Unhappy things flew in out of the night, And ever the sad human swarm returned, Some crazy fluttering and some half-burned. Among the labourers, gnarled and splashed with mire, the disillusioned women sipping fire, slow-tasting bargainers amid the flare, and lurid ruminators, I was ware of that cold face from which I may not run, which even now doth stab me in the sun. That face was of a woman that alone sat sewing, a white liquor by her shone, from which at moments wearily and slow she sipped, then bent above her sewing low. A sober dress of decent serge she wore, uplifted nicely from the smirching floor, and with a bunch of grapes her hat was crowned, which trembled together if she glanced around speckless arranged and with no braid awry all smooth and combed she sewed incessantly she turned her eyes on me they had no ray but stared like windows in the pier of day so cold her gaze that i bowed down my head trembling it seemed to me that she was dead and that those hands mechanically went, as though the original force not yet was spent. You that have wailed above the quiet clay, that on the pillow without stirring lay, yet think how I stood mourning by the side of her who sat, but seemed as she had died. Cold yet so busy, though so nimble dead, whose fingers ever at the sewing sped. I spoke with her, and in slow terror guessed, how she, so ready for perpetual rest, so smoothly combed and for the ground prepared, whose eyes already fixed beyond me stared, could sidle unobserved and safely glide, amid the crowd that wist not she had died gently she spoke not once her cheek grew pale and i translate the dreadful placid tale she with a soul was born she felt it leap within her it could wonder laugh and weep but dismally as rain on ocean blear the days upon that human spirit dear fell and existence lean in sky-dead grey, withholding steadily, starved it away. London ignored it with deliberate stare, until the delicate thing began to wear. She felt it ailing, for she knew not what. Feebly she wept, but she could aid it not ah not the stirring child within the womb hath such an urgent need of light and room then hungry grew her soul she looked around but nothing to allay that famine found she felt it die a little every day flutter less wildly and more feebly pray stiller it grew at times she felt it pull imploring thinly something beautiful and in the night was painfully awake and struggled in the darkness still daybreak for not at once not without any strife it died at times it started back to life now at some angel evening after rain builded like early paradise again now at some flower or human face or sky with silent tremble of infinity or at some waft of fields in midnight sweet or soul of summer dawn in the dark street slowly she was aware her soul had died within her body for no more it cried 
vexed her no more and now monotonous life easily passed she was exempt from strife and from her soul was willing to be freed she could not keep what she could never feed and she was well above or bliss or care hunger and thirst were her emotions bare for the great stars consented and withdrew and music and the moon greenness and dew yet for a time more heavily and slow she walked and indolently worked as though about with her she could not help but bring within her busy body the dead thing when i had heard her tell without one tear what now i have translated in great fear toward her i leaned and o oh, my sister cried my sister but my hand she put aside lest i her decent dress might disarray and so smiled on me that i might not stay and i remembered that to one long dead i spoke no sound shall rouse her now i said not orpheus touching in that gloom his cord nor even the special whisper that restored pale lazarus yet will she seem to run and hurry eager in the noonday sun industrious timed and kempt till she at last run down inaccurate aside is cast while thus i whispered and in wonder wild could not unfix my gaze from her a child plucked at her dress and the dead woman rose on to the mirror silently she goes lightly a loose tress touches at her ear she gazes in her own eyes without fear deliberately then with fingers light she smoothed her dress and stole into the night end of poem this recording is in the public domain marpessa from poems by stephen phillips Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone. Marpessa, being given by Zeus her choice between the god Apollo and Idas, a mortal, chose Idas. Wounded with beauty in the summer night, young Idas tossed upon his couch and cried, Marpessa, O oh Marpessa, from the dark the floating smell of flowers invisible the mystic yearning of the garden wet the moonless passing night into his brain wandered until he rose and outward leaned in the dim summer twas the moment deep when we are conscious of the secret dawn amid the darkness that we feel is green to idas had marpessa been revealed roaming with morning thoughts amid the dew all fresh from sleeping and upon her cheek the bloom of pure repose like perfect fruit even at the moment was her beauty ripe the god apollo from the heaven of heavens her mortal sweetness through the air allured and on this very noon she shall decide twixt idas and the god take to herself a brief or an eternal lover so when the long day that glideth without cloud the summer day was at her blue deep hour of lilies musical with busy bliss when very light trembled as with excess and heat was frail and every bush and flower was drooping in the glory overcome they three together met on the one side fresh from diffusing lights on all the world apollo on the other without sleep idas and in the midst marpessa stood just as a flower after drenching rain so from the falling of felicity her human beauty glowed and it was new 
the bee too near her bosom drowsed and dropped but as the gods sprang to embrace her they heard thunder and a little afterward the far paternal voice let her decide and as a flame blown backwards by a gust burned to and fro in fury beautiful the murmuring god but at the last he spoke and smiled as on his favourite western isle marpessa though no trouble nor any pain so it is willed can touch me but i live for ever in a deep deliberate bliss a spirit sliding through tranquillity yet when i saw thee i imagined woe that thou who art so fair shouldst ever taste of the earth's sorrow for thy life has been the history of a flower in the air liable but to breezes and to time as rich and purposeless as is the rose thy simple doom is to be beautiful the god created but to grow not stray and not to suffer merely to be sweet the favourite of his reigns and thou indeed lately upon the summer wast disclosed child wilt thou taste of grief on thee the hours shall feed and bring thy soul unto the dusk even now thy face is hasting to the dark for slowly shalt thou cool to all things great and wisely smile at love and thou shalt see beautiful faith surrendering to time the fierce ingratitude of children loved ah sting of stings a mourner shalt thou stand at passion's funeral in decent garb the greenly silent and cool growing night shall be the time when most thou art awake with dreary eyes of all illusion cured beside that stranger that thy husband is but if thou live with me then shalt thou bide in mere felicity above the world in peace alive and moving where to stir is ecstasy and thrilling is repose what is the love of men that women seek it in its beginning pale with cruelty but having sipped of beauty negligent and full of languor and distaste for they seeking that perfect face beyond the world approach in vision earthly semblances and touch and at the shadows flee away then wilt thou die part with eternal thoughts lie without any hope beneath the grass all thy imaginations in the dust and all that tint and melody and breath which in their lovely unison are thou to be dispersed upon the whirling sands thy soul blown seaward on nocturnal blast o brief and breathing creature wilt thou cease once having been thy doom doth make thee rich and the low grave doth make thee exquisite but if thou livest with me then i will kiss warm immortality into thy lips and i will carry thee above the world to share my ecstasy of flinging beams and scattering without intermission joy and thou shalt know that first leap of the sea toward me the grateful upward look of earth emerging roseate from her bath of dew we two in heaven dancing babylon shall flash and murmur and cry from under us and nineveh catch fire and at our feet be hurled with her inhabitants and all adoring asia kindle and hugely bloom we two in heaven running continents shall lighten ocean into ocean flash and rapidly laugh till all this world is warm or since thou art a woman thou shalt have more tender tasks to steal upon the sea a long-expected bliss to tossing men 
or build upon the evening sky some wished and glorious metropolis of cloud thou shalt persuade the harvest and bring on the deeper green or silently attend the fiery funeral of foliage old connive with time serene and the good hours or for i know thy heart a dearer toil to lure into the air a face long sick to gild the brow that from its dead looks up to shine on the unforgiven of this world with slow sweet surgery restore the brain and to dispel shadows and shadowy fear when he had spoken humble idas said after such argument what can i plead or what pale promise make yet since it is in women to pity rather than to aspire a little i will speak i love thee then not only for thy body packed with sweets of all this world that cup of brimming june that jar of violet wine set in the air that palest rose sweet in the night of life nor for that stirring bosom all besieged by drowsing lovers or thy perilous hair nor for that face that might indeed provoke invasion of old cities no nor all thy freshness stealing on me like strange sleep not for this only do i love thee but because infinity upon thee broods and thou art full of whispers and of shadows thou meanest what the sea has striven to say so long and yearned up to the cliffs to tell thou art what all the winds have uttered not what the still night suggesteth to the heart thy voice is like to music heard ere birth some spirit lute touched on a spirit sea thy face remembered is from other worlds it has been died for though i know not when it has been sung of though i know not where it has the strangeness of the luring west and of sad sea horizons beside thee i am aware of other times and lands of birth far back of lives in many stars o beauty lone and like a candle clear in this dark country of the world thou art my woe my early light my music dying as he was speaking she with lips apart breathed and with dimmer eyes leaned through the air as one in dream and now his human hand took in her own and to apollo spoke o oh, gradual rose of the dim universe whose warmth steals through the grave unto the dead soul of the early sky the priest of bloom who beautifully goeth in the west attracting as to an eternal home the yearning soul male of the female earth o eager bridegroom springing in this world as in thy bed prepared fain would i know yon heavenly wafting through the heaven wide and the large view of subjected seas and famous cities and the various toil of men or asia at my feet spread out in indolent magnificence of bloom africa in her matted hair obscured and india in meditation plunged then the delight of flinging the sunbeams diffusing silent bliss and yet more sweet to cherish fruit on the warm wall to raise out of the tomb to glory the pale wheat serene ascension by the rain prepared to work with the benignly falling hours and beautiful slow time but dearest this to gild the face that from its dead looks up to shine on the rejected and arrive to women that remember in the night or mend with sweetish surgery the mind and yet forgive me if i can but speak most human words 
of immortality thou singest thou wouldst hold me from the ground and this just opening beauty from the grave as yet i have known no sorrow all my days like perfect lilies under water stir and god has sheltered me from his own wind the darling of his breezes have i been yet as to one in land that dreameth lone seafaring men with their sea-weary eyes round the infire tell of some foreign land so aged men much tossed about in life have told me of that country sorrow far how many goodly ships at anchor lie within her ports even to me indeed hath a sea rumour through the night been borne and i myself remember and have heard of men that did believe women that loved that were unhappy long and now are dead with wounds that no eternity can close life had so marked them or of others who panted towards their end and fell on death even as sobbing runners breast the rope and most i remember of all human things my mother often as a child i pressed my face against her cheek and felt her tears even as she smiled on me her eyes would fill until my own grew ignorantly wet and i in silence wondered at sorrow when i remember this how shall i know that i myself may not by sorrow taught accept the perfect stillness of the ground where though i lie still and stir not at all yet shall i irresistibly be kind helplessly sweet a wandering garden bliss my ashes shall console and make for peace this mind that injured be an aimless balm or if there be some other world with no bloom neither rippling sound nor early smell nor leaves nor pleasant exchange of human speech only a dreadful pacing to and fro of spirits meditating on the sun a land of barred boughs and grieving wind yet would i not forgo the doom the place whither my poets and my heroes went before me warriors that with deeds forlorn saddened my youth yet made it great to live lonely antagonists of destiny that went down scornful before many spears who soon as we are born are straight our friends and live in simple music country songs and mournful ballads by the winter fire since they have died their death is ever mine i would not lose it then thou speakest of joy of immortality without one sigh existence without tears for evermore thou wouldst preserve me from the anguish lest this holy face into the dark return yet i being human human sorrow miss the half of music i have heard men say is to have grieved when comes the lonely wail over the mind old men have told it me subdued after long life by simple sounds the mourner is the favourite of the moon and the departing sun his glory owes to the eternal thoughts of creatures brief who think the thing that they shall never see since we must die how bright the starry track how wonderful in a bereaved ear the northern wind how strange the summer night the exhaling earth to those who vainly love out of our sadness have we made this world so beautiful the sea sighs in our brain and in our hearts that yearning of the moon 
to all this sorrow was i born and since out of a human womb i came i am not eager to forego it i would scorn to elude the heaviness and take the joy for pain came with the sap pangs with the bloom this is the sting the wonder yet should i linger beside thee in felicity sliding with open eyes through liquid bliss for ever still i must grow old ah i should ail beside thee apollo and should note with eyes that would not be but yet are dim ever so slight a change from day to day in thee my husband watch thee nudge thyself to little offices that once were sweet slow where thou once were swift remembering to kiss those lips which once thou couldst not leave i should expect thee by the western bay faded not sure of thee with desperate smiles and pitiful devices of my dress or fashion of my hair thou wouldst grow kind most bitter to a woman that was loved i must ensnare thee in my arms and touch thy pity to but hold thee to my heart but if i live with idas then we two on the low earth shall prosper hand in hand in odours of the open field and live in peaceful noises of the farm and watch the pastoral fields burned by the setting sun and he shall give me passionate children not some radiant god that will despise me quite but clambering limbs and little hearts that err and i shall sleep beside him in the night and fearful from some dream shall touch his hand secure or at some festival we two will wander through the lighted city streets and in the crowd i'll take his arm and feel him closer for the press so shall we live and though the first sweet sting of love be past the sweet that almost venom is though youth with tender and extravagant delight the first and secret kiss by twilight hedge the insane farewell repeated o'er and o'er pass off there shall succeed a faithful peace beautiful friendship tried by sun and wind durable from the daily dust of life and though with sadder still with kinder eyes we shall behold all frailties we shall haste to pardon and with mellowing minds to bless then though we must grow old we shall grow old together and he shall not greatly miss my bloom faded and the waning light of eyes too deeply gazed in ever seem to dim nor shall we murmur at nor much regret the years that gently bend us to the ground and gradually incline our face that we leisurely stooping and with each slow step may curiously inspect our lasting home but we shall sit with luminous holy smiles endeared by many griefs by many a jest and custom sweet of living side by side and full of memories not unkindly glance upon each other last we shall descend into the natural ground not without tears one must go first our god one must go first after so long one blow for both were good still like old friends glad to have met and leave behind a wholesome memory on the earth and thou beautiful god in that far time when in thy setting sweet thou gazest down on this grey head wilt thou remember then that once i pleased thee that i once was young when she had spoken idas with one cry held her and there was silence while the god in anger disappeared then slowly they he looking downward she gazing up into the evening green wandered away
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Wife from Poems by Stephen Phillips Read for LibriVox.org A True Story Done in verse. Her husband starved and gazed up in her face. There was no crumb of bread in the bare place. Grieving, she stared into the waning light with fixed eyes that had in them no sight. But now at last, so deeply, ah, he said, she might no longer bide about the bed, but as in panic ran from side to side, and like a creature all around her spied. Sudden she stood, and paled in her thought, and with both hands at her wild bosom caught. She saw the room of every morsel reft, and only her own body now is left. Then like a martyr, robing for the flame, she wound the shawl about her without shame. Lo, in the red shawl, sacredly she burned, her face already into ashes turned, and blind out of the brightness of his face, onto the street she came with wandering pace. But at the door a moment did she quail, hearing her little son behind her wail, who waking stretched his arms out to her wide. And softly, Mother, take me with you, cried. For he would run beside her, clasping tight her hand and lag at every window bright, or near some stall beneath the wild gas flare, at the dim fruit and ghostly bloom would stare. Toward him she turned, and felt her bosom swell wildly. He was so young, almost she fell, yet took him up, and to allay his cries, smiled at him with her lips, not with her eyes, then laid him down, away her hand she snatched, and now with streaming face the door unlatched. When lo, the long uproar of feet, the huge dim fury of the street, while she into the wild night goes, that in her eyes a light shower blows, Faces like moths against her fly, Like moths by brilliance lured to die. The clerk with spirit lately dead, The decent clothes above him spread, The joyous cruel face of boys, Those dreadful shadows proffering toys, The constable with lifted hand, Conducting the orchestral strand, A woman secretly distressed, And staidly weeping, dimly dressed, a girl is vending flowers and fern. Their very touch her fingers burn. A blind man passes. That doth sound, with shaking head the hollow ground. In showering air, the mystic damp. The dim balm blown from lamp to lamp. A strange look from a shredded shawl. A casual voice with thrilling fall. The officer from passing eye Hustles the forms that injured lie. Creatures we marred, compelled upright, To drift beside us in the light. But now she slowly trembles as she sees The cruel lover that must give her ease. Sated, arranged, he paced in moody stride, With little lilies on his breast that died. Oh, meekly she beside him went away, And dutifully as a daughter may. From that unrealized embrace, swiftly she broke with eager face, with food for him that called aloud. She battled through the hostile crowd, an army to frustrate her bent, in sullen numbers gainst her scent. The mystic river floating wan, the cold soul of the city shone. The moon at terminus through the dark, with emerald and ruby spark. The stoker burningly embowered, with fiery roses on him showered, glide at her feet the mud gleam blue, above a cloudy tinge and rue, and through the dark the early smell of waking meadows on her fell. With her right arm the door she pushed, and to the dead the widow rushed. But at the sight so deeply was she torn, 
She babbled to him like one lately born, and sorrowful dim sounds about him made, that were not speech, and wildly to him prayed. She felt how cold is God, how brief our breath, how vain is any love, how strong is death. O oh, fool, O oh, fool, to have so quickly died. I am unclean forevermore, she cried. And then with fear, with gathering distrust, swiftly between his teeth the muscles thrust. Then stiller grew, and with a moaning slow, relented now and wearied in her woe. But as the woman dying in her thought looked upward at her dress her baby got, and she revived, and toward her little son ventured that he into her arms might run. And like a strange woman all doubtfully, she stretched her arms out shining wistfully, as though with meek advances she beguiled into her sighing bosom her own child, then pulled him close to her and held him there, and all those tears fell down into his hair. Softly she said, O oh, cruel newborn thing, the years to you a gentleness will bring. Then think of me as one that not in thought, but out of yearning into woe was brought. So as she moaned above him, the old farm, with evening noises in the twilight charm, returned, and she remembered quiet trees just stirring. She can hear the very breeze. Her prudent mother wisely to her speaks. Her peaceful hair, a little sorrow streaks. And as a soft and dreadful summer day, will suddenly through chill December stray. So the mild beauty of old happiness wandered into her mind with strange distress. Till slowly with the gathering light, lo, life came back on her. Desire and dust and strife, the huge and various world with murmur grand. Time had begun to touch her with soft hand, and sacred passing hours, with all things new, divine forgetfulness and falling dew. Then hunger pained, no thought she had, no care. She and the child together ate that fair. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Faces at a Fire From Poems by Stephen Phillips Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone Dazzled with watching how the swift fire fled Along the dribbling roof, I turned my head when lo upraised beneath the lighted cloud the illumined unconscious faces of the crowd an old grey face in lovely bloom upturned the ancient rapture and the dream returned a crafty face wandering simply up that dying face near the communion cup the experienced face now venturous and rash the scheming eyes hither and thither flash that common trivial face made up of needs now pale and recent from triumphal deeds the hungry tramp with indolent gloating stare the beggar in glory and released from care a mother slowly burning with bare breast yet her consuming child close to her pressed that prosperous citizen in anguish dire beseeching heaven from purgatorial fire wondrous souls by sudden flame betrayed i saw then through the darkness went afraid end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Lily by Stephen Phillips Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley The Lily I dreamed that after wandering long I came To a dark garden 
with frail souls for flowers, and saw the gentle lady we called Death pace to and fro above each bloom she bent, then passed a slumberous sky above her rolled, cloud upon cloud, and from those human flowers a tragic odour like emotion rose. I followed in her steps, and now she touched some poppy that had been a dreamer frail, or rose that was a passionate eastern queen. But on a sudden I implored her hand, and should have fallen from a lily near, what sweet and paining odour to my brain, darted with delicate unhappy smell, of trouble old and gladness far away, I knew more surely than from any face, more certainly remembered than at words, and slowly swooning, said, "'Tis she, tis she, than looking to that lady cold, whose face no sternness and no pity had, I said. Lady, this flower, but a little while, oh, but a little while, had risen here, have a deep care of it, a small neglect, a brief oblivion overburdens it, for she that is this flower, and merely blows, so strangely silent, and so white was used, to be much loved, and guarded wistfully. Oh, from this flower, be never far away, but she to whom I spoke moved slowly on, and as I walked beside her, I awoke. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Milton, Blind From Poems by Stephen Phillips Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone He who said suddenly, Let there be light, To thee the dark deliberately gave, That those full eyes might undistracted be By this beguiling show of sky and field, this brilliance that so lures us from the truth he gave thee back original night his own tremendous canvas large and blank and free whereat each thought a star flashed out and sang o oh, blinded with a special lightning thou hadst once again the virgin dark and when the pleasant flowery sight which had deterred thine eyes from seeing when this recent world was quite withdrawn then burst upon thy view the elder glory space again in pangs and eden odorous in the early mist that heaving watery plain that was the world then the burned earth and christ coming in clouds or rather a special leave to thee was given by the high power and thou with bandaged eyes wast guided through the glimmering camp of god thy hand was taken by angels who patrol the evening or our sentries to the dawn or pace the wide air everlastingly thou wast admitted to the presence and deep argument heardest and the large design that brings this world out of the woe to bliss end of poem this recording is in the public domain lazarus from poems by stephen phillips Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone. The light which I have followed all this way out of the darkness grows into a face, thy face, dear friend, whom I so long have known. 
have we not wandered with twined arms and walked through evening fields together and those lips that i have kissed so oft did they pronounce that dreadful whisper lazarus arise for as it came in darkness i was ware of countenances terrible that gazed each on the other in drear impotence as i with sighs arose eluding them o face that seemeth made to weep and smile with us and hands all rough with common tasks is this indeed thy son to which thou hast recalled me and are these thy fields which grow slowly from grey to green before my eyes i felt thee irresistible in the grave forgive me that i talk so lightly and went so unconcerned beside thee in old days how is it thou canst care to come and go with such as me and walk and work with us thou at whose whisper death idled and grieved and knew the voice at which creation shone suddenly yet was i so near to peace and i came back to life remorsefully when the sea murmured again and fields appeared but how should i complain unto what end am i recalled i know not but if thou art here content to be then why not i end of poem this recording is in the public domain faith from poems by stephen phillips read for librivox dot org by alan mapstone thou power that beyond the wind rulest to thee i am resigned my child from me is snatched away she vanished at the pier of day yet i discern with clearer brow a high indulgence in the blow light in the storm that o'er me broke a special kindness in the stroke a gentleness behind the law a sweetness following on the all shall i forget that noonday hour when as upon some favourite flower a deep and tingling bliss was shed a thrilling peace from overhead i had not known it since my birth i shall not know it more on earth but now i may not sin nor err for fear of ever losing her though reeling from thy thunder blow though blinded with thy lightning low i stagger back to dismal life and mix myself with mortal strife thy judgment still to me is sweet i feel i feel that we shall meet end of poem this recording is in the public domain by the sea from poems by stephen phillips read for LibriVox .org by alan lawley by the sea remember ah remember how we walked together on the sea cliff you were come from bathing in the ocean and the sea was not yet dry upon your hair together we walked in the wet wind till we were far from voices even from the thoughts of men remember how on the warm beach we sat by the old bark and in a smell of tar while the full ocean on the pebbles dropped and in our ears the intimate low wind of noon that breathing from some ancient place blew on us merest sleep and pungent youth so deeply glad we grew that in pure joy closer we came your wild and wet dark hair slashed in my eyes your essence and your sting 
we had no thought. We troubled not to speak. Slowly your head fell down upon my breast. In a soft breeze, the acquiescing sun and the sea bloom, the color of calm wind, was on your cheek. Like children, then we kissed. Innocent with the sea and pure with air, my spirit fled into thee. The moon climbed, the sea foamed nearer, and we too arose. But ah, how tranquil, from that deep embrace, and with no sadness, from that natural kiss, beautiful indolence was on our brains, and on our limbs, as we together swayed. Between the luminous ocean and dark fields, we too in vivid slumber, without haste, returned, while veil on veil the heaven was bared, and a new glory was on land and sea, and the moist evening fallow, richly dark, sent up to us the odour cold of sleep, the infinite sweet of death, so we returned, delaying even calm companions, peacefully slow beside the moody heave of the moon brilliant billow to the town. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. ASP from Poems by Stephen Phillips Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone Frail was she born, petal by petal fell her life, Till it was strown upon the herb. Like petals all her fancies lay about, And the dread powers kept her face towards grief, Although she swerved, and still with many a lash, Guided her to the anguish carefully. So bare her soul that beauty like a lance Pierced her, and odour full of arrows was. She drugged her brain against realities, And lived in dreams, and was with music fed, imploring to be spared e'en sweetest things she suffered and resorted to the ground glad to be blind and eager to be deaf soliciting eternal apathy and she was swift to steep her brain in moss and with the heart that so had loved to blow merely and to be idle in the wind she craved no paradise but only peace end of poem this recording is in the public domain the question from poems by stephen phillips read for LibriVox.org by inco father beneath the moonless night this heavy stillness without light there comes a thought which I must speak. Why is my body then so weak? Why do I falter in the race, And flag behind this mighty pace? Why is my strength so quickly flown? And hark, my mother sobs alone. My son, when I was young and free, When I was filled with sap and glee, I squandered here and there my strength, Unto thy mother's arms at length. Weary I came, and overtired, With fever all my bones were fired, Therefore so soon thy strength is flown, Therefore thy mother sobs alone. Father, since in your weaker thought, And in your languor I was wrought, Put me away as creatures are, I am infirm and filled with care, Feebly brought me to the light, Ah, gently hide me out of sight, Then sooner will my strength be flown, Nor will my mother sob alone. My son, stir up the fire, and pass, Quickly, the comfortable glass, the infirm and evil fly in vain, Is toiling up the window pane. Fill up, your life is, so, nor sigh, We cannot run from destiny. 
Then cheer thy strength that's quickly flown. Ah, how thy mother sobs alone. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Beautiful Death from Poems by Stephen Phillips Read for LibreOx.org by Inkel Why dreadest thou the calm process of death To miss thy wife's illuminating smile No more to proudly touch thy child's bright hair To leave this glory and green, this flashing sun Yet death is full of leisure and of light Of compensations and of huge amends Since all the dead do for the living toil Assisting, bathing, in the air, the earth, A shower their sympathy draws from the ground, Delicious kindness from the soil exhaled. Then thou, spendthrift of time, shalt busy be, Thou shalt begin to foster and prepare, O thou that within glaze and blinds didst live, In blackness within windows bright absorbed, Face to the surface swimming with drowned eyes, Thou as a breeze shalt wander through the ward, Balm to the sick, a cool and vagrant bliss. To thee the tired faces shall incline, Incline with closing eyes and open mouths. Thou, dangerous to men, in prison shut, With life made irretrievable and dark, Thou on the thirsty place shalt drop like dew, Or like a cloud haste to the yearning land. Thou maiden with their silent speckless ways, On plant or creature squandering thy heart, Thou in caresses large shalt spend thy life, Conspiring with the summer plans of lovers sent From evening hedge the walk of boy and girl Thou merchant or thou clerk, hard driven, urged For ever on bright iron, timed by bells Shalt mellow fruit in the serene noon air With rivulets of birds through fields of light Causing to fall the indolent misty peach Then thou, disturbed so oft, shalt make for peace Thou, who didst injure, heal, and sow, and bless Thou who didst mar, shalt make for perfect health. Thou, so unlucky, full with fortunate rain, And I to whom sweet life is dangerous edged, With tenderness to madness near, with need, Even of a little dew, a drop of hope, Disguised and starved, who dare not show my soul, Who walk with bitten lip and clenched hands, For me divine relief, to dare to trust, Each impulse, and to drive free and secure, All my intention bland and prosperous, the rose is at my silent coming rich. I on my enemy's eyes, like sleep, shall drop, And he at dawn shall bless me and shall drowse. Blind shall I be, and good, dumb, and serene. I shall not blame nor question, I shall shine, Diffused and tolerant, luminous and large. No longer shall I vex, but live my life, In solaces, caresses, and in balms. Nocturnal soothings and nutritious sighs, The unhappy mind and odour shall be breathed, I shall be sagely blown, flung with design, Assist this bland and universal scheme, Industrious, happy, sweet, delicious, dead. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Prisoner from Poems by Stephen Phillips Read for LibriVox.org by M. Lee Backward the prison door is flung, Without the young wife stands, While to herself she murmurs with bright eyes And over-eager hands. They brought the young man out to her That was so strong erewhile, Slowly he ventured up to her strange arms With unrecalling smile. Oh, like a mother she must lead, his slow and wandering pace. He stammers to her like a little child and wonders in her face. Oh, like a daughter she must live and no wife to him now, only remain beside those ailing limbs and soothe that aged brow. Husband, she said, I had rather closed those wild eyes on the bier, rather have kissed those lips when they were cold, than see them smile so drear. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
The Wound from Poems by Stephen Phillips Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone I dreamed that, having died, my soul was brought into the presence. Many angels stood around, and with delight upon me gazed. And higher I discern the face of God, diffusing silent universal bliss. Then moved an angel toward me, and with joy addressed me, saying, come and rest at last and having rested then thou shalt rejoice the heavenly company smiled on me sweet but i unbared my soul and showed to them that wound which never human word or hope or pity hath ever swaged and at the sight a strange disturbance on the spirits came and even a dimness on the face of god then rose from god's right hand a gentle form with silent eyes that said hast thou forgot and he disclosed his branded brow and hands but i toward him turning softly said thy wounds are many but thou hadst no child. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The New De Profundis from Poems by Stephen Phillips. Read for LibriVox.org by our Mapstone. Out from the mist, the mist, I cry, let not my soul of numbness die. My life is furled in every limb, and my existence groweth dim. My senses all like weapons rust, and lie disused in endless dust. I may not love, I may not hate, slowly I feel my life abate. O oh, would there were a heaven to hear, O oh, would there were a hell to fear. Ah, welcome fire, eternal fire, To burn for ever and not tire. Better Ixion's whirling wheel, And still at any cost to feel, Dear Son of God, in mercy give, My soul to flame, but let me live i am discouraged by the street the pacing of monotonous feet faces of all emotion purged from nothing unto nothing urged the living men that shadows go a vain procession to and fro the earth an unreal course doth run haunted by a phantasmal sun thou didst create me keen and bright of hearing exquisite and sight look on thy creature muffled furled that has no glory in thy world in odours that like arrows dart beauty that overwhelms the heart i neither hear nor smell nor see but only glide perpetually i seem to feel upon my soul the slow approach the gradual roll of darkness older than the light of blackness gaining on the bright o oh, wasted is that wine like blood wasted the flesh that was our food if in the dimness without strife i perish life o oh, give me life End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Apparition from Poems by Stephen Phillips Read for LibriVox.org by Kevin S. 1. My dead love came to me and said, God gives me one hour's rest to spend upon the earth with thee. How shall we spend it best? why as of old i said and so we quarrelled as of old and when i turned to make my peace that one short hour was told two nine nights she did not come to me the heaven was filled with rain 
and as it fell and fell i said she will not come again last night she came not as before but in a strange attire weary she seemed and very faint as though she came from fire three she is not happy it was noon the sun fell on my head and it was not an hour in which we think upon the dead she is not happy i should know her voice much more her cry and close beside me a great rose had just begun to die she is not happy as i walked of her i was aware she cried out like a creature hurt close by me in the air for under the trembling summer stars i turned from side to side when she came in and sat with me as though she had not died and she was kind to me and sweet she had her ancient way remembered how i liked her hand amid my hair to stray she had forgotten nothing yet older she seemed and still all quietly she took my kiss even as a mother will she rose and in the streak of dawn she turned as if to go but then again came back to me my eyes implored her so she pushed the hair from off my brow and looked into my eyes i live in calm she said and there i'm learning to be wise why grievest thou i pity thee still turning on this bed and art thou happy i exclaimed alas she sighed and fled five i awoke she had been standing by with wonder on her face she came toward me very bright as from a blessed place she touched me not but smiling spoke and softly as before they gave me drink from some slow stream i love thee now no more six the other night she hurried in her face was wild with fear old friend she said i am pursued may i take refuge here End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lyrics from Poems by Stephen Phillips. Read for LibriVox.org by Inco. One. Oh, to recall, what to recall? All the roses under snow, not these. Stars that toward the water go, not these. Oh, to recall, what to recall? All the greenness after rain, not this. Joy that gleameth after pain, not this. Oh, to recall, what to recall? Not the greenness nor delight, not these. Not the roses out of sight, not these. Oh, to recall, what to recall? Not the star in waters red, not this. Laughter of a girl that's dead, oh, this. Two. I in the greyness rose, I could not sleep for thinking of one dead, then to the chest I went, where lie the things of my beloved spread. Quietly these I took, a little glove, a sheet of music torn, paintings, ill done perhaps, then lifted up a dress that she had worn. And now I came to where her letters are, they lie beneath the rest, and read them in the haze. She spoke of many things, was sore oppressed. But these things moved me not, not when she spoke of being parted quite, or being misunderstood, or growing weary of the world's great fight. Not even when she wrote, of our dead child, and the handwriting swerved. Not even then I shook, not even by such words was I unnerved. I thought, she is at peace, whether the child is gone, she too has passed, and a much-needed rest has fallen upon her. She is still at last. But when at length I took, From under all those letters one small sheet, Folded and written haste, Why did my heart with sudden sharpness beat? Alas, it was not sad. Her saddest words I had read calmly o'er. Alas, it had no pain. Her painful words, all these I knew before. A hurried happy line, Little jest, too slight for one so dead. This did I not endure. Then with a shuddering heart no more I read. 3. O oh, thou art put to many uses sweet, Thy blood will urge the rose, And surge in spring, but yet, And all the blue of thee will go to the sky, And all thy laughter to the rivers run, 
but yet thy tumbling hair will in the west be seen, and all thy trembling bosom in the dawn, but yet thy briefness in the dewdrop shall be hung, and all the frailness of thee on the foam, but yet thy soul shall be upon the moonlight spent, thy mystery spread upon the evening mere, and yet End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Christ in Hades From Poems by Stephen Phillips Read for LibriVox.org By Algie Pug Christ in Hades A Fantasy Keen as a blinded man At dawn awake Smells in the dark the cold odour of earth Eastward he turns his eyes, and over him a dreadful freshness exquisitely breathes. The room is brightening, even his own face. So the excluded ghosts in Hades felt a waft of early sweet, and heard the rain of spring beginning over them. They all stood still, and in each other's faces looked, and restless grew their queen Persephone who, like a child, dreading to be observed by awful dis, threw little glances down toward them, and understood them with her eyes. Perpetual dolor had as yet but drooped the corners of her mouth, and in her hand she held a bloom that had on earth a name. Quickly she whispered, Come, my Hermes, come, tis time to fetch me. Ah! Through all my veins the sharpness of the spring returns. I hear the stalk revive with sap, and the first drops on green illumined grass. Now over me the blades are growing fast. I cannot rest. He comes, he comes, yet with how slow a step who used to run along a sunny gust. And, oh, a withered wreath, no roses now dewy from paradise. Surely not his, those earnest eyes, that ragged hair, his face was glad and cold. This is no god at all, only some grieving human shade, with hands unsightly, and the eager furies wheel over him. Slowly to her side, her arms had fallen. Christ, with grave eyes, looks on her. Her young mouth trembled fast, and from her hand, with serious face, she let the earthly flower drop down. Then, stretching out her arms, she said, Oh, all fresh out of beautiful sunlight, thine eyes are still too dazed to see us clear. Was it not difficult to come away, straight from the greenness to the dimness? Now it is the time of tender, opening things. Above my head the fields murmur and wave, and breezes are just moving the clear heat. Oh, the mid-noon is trembling on the corn, on cattle calm, and trees in perfect sleep. And hast thou empty come? Hast thou not brought even a blossom with the noise of rain and smell of earth about it, that we all might gather round and whisper over it? At one wet blossom all the dead would feel. O oh, thou, beginning to glide here as shadow, soon shalt thou know how much it seems to us, in miserable dim magnificence, to feel the snowdrop growing over us. That barren crown! But now it was a wreath. These gusts of hell have blown it into thorn. If thou canst bear it yet, oh, speak to me of the blue noon, of breezes and of rivers. A wonderful stillness stopped her, like to trees motionless in an ecstasy of rain. So the tall dead stood drooping around Christ, under the falling peace intensely still. And some, in slow delight, their faces raised upwards, but soon, like leaves, duly released, tormented phantoms, ancient injured shades, Sighing began downward to drift and glide toward him, and unintelligibly healed, lingered, with closing eyes and parting lips. 
Agamemnon bowed over, and from his wheel Ixion staggered to his feet, all blind. Over the head of Jesus the whole sky of pain began to drive. Old punishments disreathing drooped, and legendary dooms dispersing hung, and lurid history streamed. But he against that flying sky remained, placid with power. In silence stood the dead, gazing. Only was heard that river steel, that listless ripple of oblivion. Then an Athenian ghost stood out and spoke. I fear to speak to thee, while these my eyes behold our great life interrupted pause. That was our sky that passes, and I miss the busy sound of water and of stone, and sorrows that we thought perpetual I see suspended, and amid them thee, gentle, and all injured. Art thou a god, easily closing all these open eyes, and hast not spoken word? Thou hast not played monotonously as rain, inducing sleep. Thou comest without loot, yet hast thou power to charm the fixed melancholy of spirits? Art thou a god? Then guide us to the air, to trees and rivers, that peculiar light, which even now is squandered on the beasts. Canst thou not make the primrose venture up, or bring the gentlest shower? Oh, pity us, for I would ask of thee only to look upon the wonderful sunlight, and to smell earth in the rain. Is not the labourer, returning heavy through the autumn sheaves against the setting sun, who gladly smells his supper from his opening door, is he not happier than these melancholy kings? How good it is to live, even at the worst! God was so lavish to us once, but here he hath repented, jealous of his beams, just as a widower, that dreaming holds his dead wife in his arms, not wondering, so natural it appears. Then starting up with trivial words, or even with a jest, realizes all the uncolored dawn, and near his head the young bird in the leaves stirring. Not less, not otherwise do we want in this colorless country the warm earth. Yet how shall we in thy tormented face believe? Thou comest from the glistening sun, as out of some great battle, nor hast thou the beautiful ease of the untroubled gods. Most strong are they, for they are joyous cold. Thou art not happy, we can trust thee not. How wilt thou lead with feet already pierced? And if we ask thy hand, see, it is torn. But when he had spoken, Christ no answer made. Upon his hands, in uncouth gratitude, great prisoners muttering fawned. Behind them stood dreadful suspended business, and vast life pausing, dismantled piers, and naked frames. And further, shapes from obscure troubles loosed, like mist descended. On the horizon last the piled tremendous firmament collapsed with dazzling pains and solemn sorrows white. Then stole a woman up to him and said, Although I know thee not, yet can I tell that only a great love hath brought thee hither. Didst thou so ail in brightness, and couldst not rest, for thinking of some woman. Was thy bed so empty, cold thy hearth, and aimless glides thy wife amidst us? Whom then dost thou seek? For see, we are so changed, thou wouldst not know the busy form that moved about thy fire. She has no occupation, and no care, no little tasks. Oh, we had pleasant homes, 
and often we remember husbands dear that were most kind and wonder after them my little children who sings to them now return then to the earth thou canst not fetch thy drooping listless woman to the air thou have no comfort out of her at all yet say perhaps thou hast but lately died and wanderest here unburied restless seem those eyes ah on thy body thou dost feel the bird settling hath no friend covered up thy limbs or do they fall with falling waves but one broke in on her with eager words see how we live along exhausted streams eluding forests and dispersing hills oh but i gloried and drank and wept and laughed give me again great life to dare to enjoy to explore never to tire to be alive and full of blood and young to risk to love the bright glory of after battle wine the flushed recounting faces the stern hum of burnished armies thrill of unknown seas as he was speaking slowly all the dead the melancholy attraction of jesus felt and millions like a sea wave upon wave heaved dreaming to that moonlight face or ran in wonderful long ripples sorrow charmed toward him in faded purple pacing came dead emperors and a sad unflattered kings unlucky captains listless armies led poets with music frozen on their lips toward the pale brilliance sighed until at last antiquity like evening gathering with mild and starry faces gradually had stolen up glimmering all the dead looked upon jesus as they stood some thought spread from the furthest edges like a breeze till like a leafy forest the huge host whispered together bending all one way toward him and then ensued a stillness deep but suddenly the form of jesus stirred and all the dead stirred with him suddenly he shuddered with a rapture and from his eyes they felt returning agonies of hope as men flame wrapped hither and thither ran to rid them or fall headlong to the ground the dead caught in intolerable hope hither and thither burning rushed or fell imploring him to leave them cold but christ came through them leading irresistibly not western spirits alone but all that world was up and after him in passion swept dead asia murmuring and the buried north but in his path a lonely spirit stood a roman he who from a greater greek borrowed as beautifully as the moon the fire of the sun fresh come he was and still deaf with the sound of rome forward he came softly a human tear had not yet dried whither he said o oh, whither dost thou lead in such a calm all these embattled dead almost i could begin to sing again to see these nations burning run through a hell magnificently anguished by the grave untired and this last march against the powers who would more gladly follow thee than i but over me the human trouble comes dear gladiator pitted against fate i fear for thee around thee is the scent of over beautiful quick fading things the pang the gap the briefness all the dew tremble and suddenness of earth i must remember young men dead in their hot bloom the sweetness of the world edged like a sword the melancholy knocking of those waves the deep unhappiness of winds the light that comes on things we never more shall see yet i am thrilled thou seemest like the born of all our music of the hinting night of souls under the moonlight opening 
Now, after speaking, he bowed down his head, faltered, and shed wet tears in the vain place, and Christ half turned, and with grave open eyes, looked on him. But behind there was a sound of vast impatience, and a murmurous chafe of captains sick for war. And poets shone all dreaming bright, and fiery prophets seized with gladness boded splendid things. And scarred heroes, as desperate men that see no path, yet follow a riddled memorable flag, pressed close upon that leader world engraved. But he began to pace with slower step, with wandering gaze, still hesitating more. Then stayed, and on his last foot strongly leaned. Faintly the air bore to him blood he knew. His gentle eyes hither and thither roved. The furies rose, ejaculating fast, and circled nearer o'er the limitless dead, who paused, all whispering. Before them hung still unredeemed Prometheus from his crag, his limbs impaled. Then stood the Son of Man, and seemed almost about to speak. The dead, in silence, upward gazed. The Titan's face, through passing storms, leaps out in dazzling pain momently on them, and his tone returns fitfully through the gusting hurricane. Stay, mighty dreamer, though thou comest on attracting all the dead, to thy deep charm resigned and bright, yet stay and look on me. Do I not trouble thee? Dost thou not swerve, smelling my kindred blood on the great track? Fall in thy path, thy menace. After me, canst thou go on? The storm carried his voice from them, and veiled with rushing hail his face. Then many unbound heroes toward him ran, going with great dumb gestures between him and Christ, and in their leader's face looked up, beseeching him, their brother, to release. Then they refrained, all motionless, and now the titan bowed, coming upon them, and seemed falling to carry with him all the crag down on them. Over the dead host he cried, Lo, all these ancient prisoners released, did I not feel them everywhere come down easily from immortal torment? Yet I, I alone, while all came down from woe, still striving, could not wrench away these limbs. O Christ, canst thou a nail move from these feet, thou who art standing in such love of me? Thy hands are too like mine to undo these bonds, brother, although the dead world follow thee, deep fascinated. Love hath marred us both, and one yearning, as wide as is the world. Oh, how thy power leaves thee at this cross! Prepare thee for the anguish. Thou shalt know trouble so exquisite, that from his will happy Ixion shall spare tears for thee, and thou shalt envy me my shadowy crag and softly feeding vulture. Thou shalt stand gazing for ever on the earth, and watch how fast thy words incarnadine the world. That I know all things is my torment, nothing that ever shall befall to me is new. Already I have suffered it far off, and on the mind the poor event appears the pale reflection of some ancient pang. Yet I foresee dim comfort, and discern a bleak magnificence of endless hope. It seems that even thy woe shall have an end. It comes upon thee. Oh, prepare thee. Ah, that wailing, those young cries, this smouldering smell. I see the dreadful look of men unborn. What hast thou said, that all the air is blood? 
he cried with nostrils shuddering fast, and Christ moved to unbind him, but with arm outstretched, suddenly stood. A scene unrolling stayed him who had easily released the dead. He knew that for a time the great advance he must delay, postponing our desire. The earth again he sees, and all mankind, half in the shining sun upright, and half reposing in the shadow. Deserts and towns, and cloudy mountains, and the trembling sea, and all the deeds done. And the spoken words distinct he hears, the human history before his eyes defiles in bright sunbeams, an endless host parading past, whom he, their leader mild, remorsefully reviewed, and had no joy in them, although aloud they cried his name, and, with fierce faces glad, looked up to him for praise, all murmuring proud, and bloody trophies toward him flourished and waved. But as he stood, gazing, from time to time, he seemed to swerve, as though his hand grew red, or move, as though to interrupt some sight. Now, when the dead saw that he must not stir, absorbed, with wonder gathering in his eyes, they came about him, touching him, and some reminded him, and looked into his face. Others, in patience, laid them down, or fell to calling him sweet earthly names. At last, waiting the signal that he could not give, wanting the one word that he might not speak, seeing he stirred not once, they wandered off, and, gathering into groups, yet spoke of him. Then, to despair, slowly dispersed, as men return with mourning to the accustomed task. And as without some theatre, so friend waited for friend, and, speaking of that scene, into the ancient sorrow walked away. Yet many could not, after such a sight, at once retire, but must, from time to time, linger with undetermining bright eyes. Now at each parting way, some said farewell, and each man took his penance up, perhaps less easily from such an interval. The vault closed back, woe upon woe, the wheel revolved, the stone rebounded. For that time Hades, her interrupted life, resumed. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of Poems by Stephen Phillips